Hey guys, and welcome back for some more not blindingly obvious tips. And this first one is going to blow your socks off. And I'm going to do you a deal. If I can blow your mind, if I can make you look at look at this and go, okay, that is that that is really not blindingly obvious how I, that I've done this. You leave me a like. Is that a fair deal? I think that's a fair deal. If you want to leave me a comment as well, I'd love it, even if it's one word, right? Just like wow or something like. But this one, I think this is going to blow your mind. You tell me, how did I do this? Yeah. <laughs> now, you may look at this, and, and after the initial, okay, how the hell has he done that? You may think, well, okay, yeah, but like, does it really have any practical application? And the answer is yes, because it allows you to create some incredibly compact designs like these two over here, where you can literally root con conveyor belts like absolutely next to each other. It's um, <laughs> it's kind of a game changer. So uh, how about I show you how I did it after you fulfill your side of the deal and go and hit that like button and maybe even leave me a comment. Right, I'll wait for you. Sorry. Right. Um, so... Uh, let me show you, and, and this I found this completely by accident, and I'll, I'll tell you, it was a misclick. I only found this by a misclick. Um, let me show you how, how you do it. Okay, in the first tips video, I showed you how to make the half-height bridge, the short half-height bridge. Well, this, this was inspired by a guy called Flo, and I want to say thanks to Flo. And um, I'm going to be crediting people that leave me tips that I use in the videos. And a lot of the tips in this video come directly from the comments on the previous video. So if you've got any tips, if you leave me a tip and I use it in a video, you're going to get credited. So this first tip is the even shorter half height bridge. So he, he pointed out that if you create a half height bridge, like I was doing, and complete the second half of it like that then you you're actually going over two squares now his trick if i take this back his trick is if you put in a piece of track like right next to it and then connect it you can get an even shorter even tinier half height bridge that is very very cool the only thing is that you can't run like if you get rid of this you can't run it underneath again so if i try and run that underneath i can't run it underneath again it's the only downside with that and it was playing around with this that uh, allowed me to make the 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 wonderful mistake that uh, allowed me to do this so let me show you we'll put in a track going down here we'll do the same half height bridge take it back then put in piece on the other side hook it up and then this is the magic oh. <laughs> How about that? It's, I mean, it's that simple and yet that incredible. I think that is truly amazing. And then once you've, once you've created that junction, you can trim it back on both sides and then you can do whatever the hell you want with it. So if we wanted it coming down here and then going back up there or going down like this, I mean, seriously, you can do some pretty amazing things with this idea. So there you go. <laughs> that uh, is the we don't need no stinking bridges trick. Okay, the next three tips all kind of link together. They're all related. Uh, the first one you might think is kind of obvious, uh, but a lot of people don't know it. The, the second one is mm, and the third one is oh, wow. Okay, so here we go. So the first one. Uh, let me throw down. Uh, let me throw down just a, a storage. Okay, so you want to move stuff into a storage or into anything for that matter. Um, if you hit the shift key while you click, then it'll move the stack in. Okay, like I think pretty much, like pretty much everyone knows that. But if you right click and hold, then you can split the stack. Okay, I think probably slightly less people know about that one. 
okay? Um, but then you can also press the control key and left click and move the entire set of stacks into wherever you're going. Uh, I think even less people know about that one. Let's move them back. But this one even hadn't occurred to me. If you press control and then you press down and hold the, uh, the right mouse key, then you can select how many you want to move from the entire quantity. So let's say I wanted to move five stacks. I can move this over here. Uh, well, okay, 498. That'll do. <laughs> okay, I said three tips. It's actually four tips. Three shall be the number of the counting. Uh, no, it's four. And um, if I throw down a planetary logistics station, and then we'll uh, we'll put some stuff into that. So we'll set it up for uh, we'll set it up for the high purity silicon. We'll use our last tip to uh, to move everything in there. There we go. And then if I come around here and put in a conveyor belt on the last uh, on the last video, I said about um, how you put a filter on these. Now, if if you if you bring out a cable, a conveyor. Um, you can mouse over this and set the filter but if you can remember to do it and i often forget <laughs> then i want to do this with a triple speed uh then when you actually bring it out it comes up and tell and asks you if you want to filter but it only does that if you've actually set up the product already so there you go so there's that one now i'm going to run this around because here comes the next tip and this is probably worth knowing if you, uh, and this is from Tarusian, Tarusian Archer was the only one that mentioned that. Um, if you bring this, I'm going to bring this all the way around. Now you can see that this is running, and this is running at max speed. If you use these things as storage, which is the, the option that kind of people don't think about necessarily, you, know, you use them for supply and demand, but you can also use them as storages. Notice this is not powered. There are no sorters on this. So this is completely energy free. Now, this leads me on to the final tip for uh, uh, planetary logistics uh, stations. And this one is a good one. I'm gonna switch to, uh, to map view. You can access the contents of these towers from anywhere on the planet. So I'm standing over here. Now, obviously I should be able to access the contents of this one. Right, so, and again, if you use your, your right mouse key or your left mouse key or whatever, uh, you can take stuff out of here. Okay, terrific. But what about one of these that's miles away? And I mean miles away. What about this one? I mean, I shouldn't be able to access the contents of this one, should I? Oh, yeah, I can. Boom. Now, that is a really, really useful tip. How many times have you been halfway across the planet and you need some stuff? All right, and you, you can just go and grab it from uh, from those. Doesn't work with uh, your regular storage chests. So the idea of using these towers as storages, frankly, is just brilliant and definitely not blindingly obvious. Right, next tip. This is about using splitters as uh, overflow valves. So here we've got uh, we've just got some some stuff going around on a conveyor belt. Well, what about if I wanted to say, like, if there's if there's not enough to fill up this conveyor belt, just keep going. But if there's enough, then I want the overflow to go somewhere else, maybe to be stored. Okay, well, let's take out, let's take a few bits of that out and we'll put in, we'll put in a splitter. If I go and set this up and set this, uh, this output to have the priority Okay, so that's got the priority now. If I put on a second one here. Okay, so what happens if this gets backed up? Will this work? Well, it, it better do. That's all I'm going to say. It better do. It does. So let's put let's put you on there. Now, this should actually start backing up because this is a single speed sorter. This is a double speed sorter. And when it gets backed up to the splitter. Oh, look. The excess goes off into storage. I've got to say, I think that is a very, very neat little trick and not blindingly obvious. Okay, flipping that last idea on its head. How do you get stuff out of a storage only when you need it? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna illustrate this one. I'm gonna put some, uh, 
put some copper in here so that we can we can really see this one. So what if I only want this to go onto this conveyor belt when when this conveyor belt's not full? Well, there's kind of a built-in uh, priority when you have T junctions. So if I connect this up, you should see that the the copper doesn't go onto this belt. The priority is always held by the the, the belt that's going through the T junction and not the one that's uh, joining at 90 degrees. Uh, just to prove that, if I get rid of this sorter, in fact, I can just get rid of that sorter. I suppose I could put a, I could put a, a speed one on. And uh, let's get rid of a few of these. And now you'll see that the copper is being taken onto that onto that conveyor belt. And I think that can be very very useful. And if you combine those two tips, you can have a system that's. Uh, filling up a storage when you've got too much and then releasing it automatically when you haven't got enough. I tell you what, I think that is a pretty good tip. Okay, the last couple of tips are quick ones and they're kind of clarifications and corrections on uh, a couple of tips from the previous video. So I said about putting down these nine charging points, but if, you'll, if you notice, you can never get all nine see this one is not charging you see i've got the little crackles around it and if you go around to that side then then this one won't so in actual fact there's only there's no point putting down more than eight because if you stand right in the center then you do get all eight so uh so there you go that was uh, that was brian justinger pointed that one out fair valid valid point brian uh, and the other one i said about uh using uh these lines these strong lines uh, to find the equator, which uh, is the equator down here. This strong line, I think you can you can see that fairly fairly easily. Um, it was pointed out to me uh, by uh, a couple of people, um, uh, Paradox and uh, Benjamin Zach, that you can also find it out just by looking down here at your uh, at your longitude. I think this is your longitude, uh, and the the lat the um, <laughs> the equator is always at zero degrees. So it doesn't matter whether it's north or south. Uh, if you go down to here, where it can, where it's zero, that's the equator. And that's it for 10 more not blindingly obvious tips. Smash that like button, leave me a comment, and I'll catch you for the next one. Peace out. Thanks for watching.